Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes the devil intimidates us because we see what we see and it's real. Think about the children of Israel when the sea was right before them, they saw it. It was real. And the leader was saying, let's go forward. But they saw the Red Sea. And they said, we're not able to go forward. But tonight we come to pray. God says it's time to pray. And the man of God and the man of God have heard the clarion call to gather the troops together to pray. If we had said Marvin said was going to be in the house, it would have been full and they would have paid $55 to see him. I ain't scared. But we call a prayer meeting in. Bless the Lord. But tonight we come to pray and be seated in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God for Pastor Essett and the awesome work that you're doing, man. Man of God, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard the rewards that God has for you. Because you have literally been through the flood, the fire, the storm, the rain, sickness and pain. I mean, you have been through, but you have stood and God rewards faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. And men of God, what you can't do for your children in the natural, God's going to do in the spirit for them. He is going to reroute enemies that have planned and plotted for centuries for your children because ancient demons want to destroy the planting of the Lord. But it shall not be so. It shall not be so. They shall not only survive, they shall thrive. They're more than conquerors. They're not only the, the, the head, they're superheads. You know how you have America's a superpower? Your children are super in the spirit and in the natural. They have favor with God, they have favor with men. They have favor. When the enemy comes to, 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 to be upon them, they have to get in line. And say, how can we serve you? Holy Ghost. What you didn't see in your life, man of God, and you're going to see a lot. But your children shall reap the rewards of your faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Tonight we're going to talk about that the glory of the Lord will fill our land. I just want to thank Pastor Oral for opening up this facility for us to come and to worship God. Didn't you enjoy Jesus? Thank God for the musicians and the praise and worship team. Awesome. Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Oh, that the glory of the Lord will fill our land. Oh, that the glory of the Lord will fill our land. People come from all over the world. All over the world. To enjoy our land. But they're going to come for the glory. They're not just going to only come for the sand, the sea, the sun, and the sin. They're going to come for the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when they're coming, we're going to have something to impart. We're not just going to put them in our pretty hotels. We're going to have something to impart when they come. Amen? Amen. Let's turn to Habakkuk 2 and verse 14. And for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead and read. For as the waters fill the sea, and this is the New Living Translation. For as the waters fill the sea, the earth will be filled mm -hmm. with an awareness. St. Thomas will be filled with an awareness of the glory of the Lord. Let's read from the King James Version. It says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So what is the glory? Pastor Esther, I think you wrote this in the, the thing that I was sent. I don't know if Pastor Oral wrote it. Somebody wrote it, but I'm going to read it. Okay. It says, I believe... Um, I'm sorry, it says, if there is a biblical term, I find the final of a straightforward meaning, it is the word glory. It seems to be used loosely to imply different ideas. Oxford Dictionary offers nine definitions of the word, and none seem to capture the full impact of the term. In Exodus 13, 16, Moses saw it as the presence of God, and demanded a confirmation that God's presence will go with the Israelites as they proceeded to Canaan. However, 
in responding to the request of Moses, God seems to imply that his glory actually consists of all his goodness and sovereignty. So let's take a look right now at that scripture. Let's turn to uh, Exodus 33, 11. Amen, God, thank you, because I was studying this today, and I got revelations on top of revelations. And then I got goosebumps on top of my goosebumps. Amen. So let's go. Let's go to work. Exodus 33, verse 11. We're going to read through verse 20. Thank you, Lord. Exodus 33, verse 11. And we're going to read through verse 20. And it reads, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. Somebody say face to face. As the man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the temple. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring us up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and though thou hast also found grace in my sight. This is Moses talking to God. We think that we can't talk to God as a friend. Moses, if you think about it, if you read that, he's almost accusing God. You said you wouldn't, and you said. Yeah, yeah. But we, we're too holy to tell God how we feel. We keep it on the inside. If there's anybody we need to tell how we feel is God. Because he knows the intents of your heart anyway. He knows you're upset. He knows you're mad. He knows you're disappointed. Tell it to Jesus alone. But what we do, we call our friend. I'm going to leave him alone. Start for another day. Okay, where am I? Verse 13, thank you. Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now the way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. He said it twice. He said, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. They ain't my people. I'm leading them, but they're your people. And the Lord said unto me, he said, my presence shall go with thee, and, it, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, this is Moses now talking to God. If thy presence go not with me, carry us, up, uh, carry us not up. Now, God just said, I'm going to send my presence with you. You think Moses is saying, thank you, Jesus. And he said, no, no, no. He says, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Man, God done told him I'm going to give you grace. He done asked, this is the third time now he's bringing up the word grace. Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth? And the Lord, so patiently, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Now keep in mind, in verse 11, the Bible said that God spoke to Moses face to, okay, verse 18, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. He didn't change the subject. He was asking, Lord, give me grace in your sight. He says, Lord, go with us. And Lord, I'm going to do all them things. And he says, okay, fine. Show me your glory. He done flip the script. Moses was greedy. And that's how we have to be if we want things from God. We can't just say, okay, I asked last year. And we stop praying. We have to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Knock. Ask. Then there's three different things. But they're all in pursuit of what you want. You can't just take one strategy and say, okay, that's enough. You got to do some prophetic gestures. And I've told the story that when I was in Bible school, I was desperate for the Lord. I mean, just desperate. I mean, I grew up in, I, grew, I was born under the pew of the church. I knew the church religious way. But I needed more. Somebody say more. more. And so I would go to Bible school from 7.30. I would go to prayer meeting 7.30 to 8.30. Class started at 9. 
And then after class, I would go volunteer at the church until 8 at night. I had homework. And then when I'd come home, I would blow a kiss to Jesus, a prophetic gesture. Not that he was saying, oh, come to me, hug you. No, I was engaging the Holy Spirit. You have to do thing one, thing two, and thing three to engage the presence of the Lord. The Lord said to me yesterday, not even thinking about this sermon, he said in the morning when I woke up, he says, when you upload praise, I download glory. Woo! I'm going to say that again. When you upload praise, I download glory. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what you're going through. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. The Bible says praise steals the avenger. Can't even move. He gets still. There's a song that says praise the Lord. For the chains that seem to bind you serve only to remind you that they drop powerless behind you when you praise him. Praise is powerful. Where am I? Now you know you got to tell me where I am. Where am I? 19. Yeah, show me your glory. So 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the, proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. Now keep in mind verse 11, he says that he talked to Moses face to face. And now he's telling them later on, you can't see my face. Those are two different interactions. There are times when God will say, go. And then there are times when God will say, stop. And you said, but God, this doesn't make sense. You told me to go. And I was on my way going. You told me to stop and go the next way. He wants to see how obedient you're going to be. He wants to see that if when he gives an instruction, if you will follow Remember, I think it was Goma. The Lord told him to marry a whore. Mm -hmm. Asked him to make his Hosea. That's right, Hosea, Bible scholars. Asked him to make his favorite time, Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. And it was hard. But he did it. Another time he asked Jeremiah, I think it was. Correct me if I'm wrong. Or Isaiah. Jeremiah, I think it was. To, to eat dung. Was it Jeremiah? Yeah. Ezekiel, you're right, sir, man of God. Ezekiel, to eat dung, that's a bowel movement, to be nice. And he did. One time, Jesus spit in somebody's face, and they got healed. See, God's not going to always come the way you think he should come. We've always heard it said that, you know, you can't see the face of God, you'll die. And I finally, today for me, I don't know, but maybe y'all saw it yesterday or saw it last year. This is my first time seeing it where God says that he spoke to Moses face to face. And then he says, you can't see my face and die, or you'll die. There are times when we got to flow and go in the glory. Just go with the presence. We can't question. We have to be obedient and say, not my will, not my way, but thine will be done. And it hurts. And it hurts when he tells you to go left and you want to go right. Let's look at Exodus 4, 34. And we're going to read from verse 5 through 11. Exodus 34, one chapter over, verse 5 through 11. Now remember that the, the Bible says that he, the Lord said, I'm going to pass by you with my goodness. Remember he said that? I'm going to pass by you. So we're going to continue reading on that. And the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there, talking about Moses, and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin, and that will be by no means clear the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children upon the third and to the fourth generation and Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and he worshipped and he said 
If now I have found grace in thy sight, there he go again. O Lord, let my Lord, I pray thee, go among us, for it is a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us for um, thine inheritance. And he said, Behold, I made a covenant before all thy people. I will do marvels. God is saying to Moses, I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among which thou art shall see the work of the Lord, for it is a terrible thing that I will do with thee. God was saying, I'm going to do terrible glory. Why can't we ask for that today? Why can't we ask for terrible glory to come to where the sinners just run into the house of the Lord? Because they want what you're having. Verse 11. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I drive out before thee the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites uh, and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now he was driving out all these things for the sake of his people. He was just not driving them out because he had power to do it. They were being persecuted. When they left their land and they went into a new land, they were enemy in the land. When we go to new territories in God, we have to drive out what was there. Went to Puerto Rico this weekend and I sensed in my spirit that the people were praying. And they were. And I sensed in my spirit that the pastors went to another level. And they did. And so we arrived on Friday, and on Friday, the youngest daughter went into the hospital. She was one in a million. She got bitten by a mosquito and went to the hospital. And it, got, it just kept getting worse. Your white blood cells should be 150,000, I found out. On Saturday, they came out to 70,000. We went to see her and they were really concerned because she couldn't keep anything in her stomach since Friday, just throwing up. Her stomach was hurting because she just kept throwing up. They said, well, don't give her anything to eat or drink. Just put ice on her lips to keep her lips moist. She's hungry. She's uncomfortable. She's throwing up. Nothing in her stomach and still throwing up. So Sunday morning before church, I went to see her and prayed and prayed. She's in the restroom throwing up. We got to church. As soon as we got there, we got a call that says her, her white blood cells had went down to 40,000. And of course, the pastor's wife is at the hospital. He's there. I'm like, you can leave. You know, he says, no, no, I can't. So 40,000, they're thinking about transferring her to another hospital and putting her in ICU. The pastor's concerned. The, the members are concerned. This is the daughter of the ministry. And I'm talking about y'all are going to go. You're going to take Colombia. You're going to take Peru. You're going to take Honduras. You're going to take all these places for Jesus. And they're being attacked. They just want to be in a hospital with, with their daughter. What am I saying? New levels, new devils. Devils that you have not seen before, devils with teeth. That bite. But you know you got the power? You got more power in your little finger than the devil having his whole body. But we get so afraid of him because of what we've heard and what we've seen. The Bible says all power in heaven and in earth has been given. Why don't you take your authority? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're battling some, some serious stuff in these islands. But the Lord says we shall prevail. Number one, we have sexual perversion. Sexual perversion is strong in these islands. And the Lord showed me this weekend that all of the people that come here, from all over the world. Some of them don't come with their wives, they come with their girlfriends. Some of them come, they pick up girls here. They just come with the idea, nobody knows my name. I'm gonna come and I'm gonna frolic and I'm gonna have fun. And when they leave, they leave that spirit of sexual perversion right here. And we wonder why people can't be faithful. We wonder why there's a stigma in the islands. And people say, oh, that's just an island man. Where he'll be married to you, but he'll be going with Sally, J Jane, and Sue. He's married to you. I have an aunt that was married, no, that was living with a man for probably 30 years. Had a child with him, and the man was still married. And y'all know y'all have the same thing in y'all family too. Look at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> but it's a spirit of sexual perversion 
that's in the islands of the seas, not only here, and it's prevalent. And so tonight we're coming against that, that spirit that would say our men and our women, because women are doing it too. They're being unfaithful. We're coming against that spirit of sexual perversion tonight. We're going to spend some time in prayer. And we're coming against that spirit of sexual perversion. We're going to cast out that Amorite. Glory to God. Then we have corruption in our political system. This is a big one because uh, there's a lot of greed. There's a lot of greed where a person can come and say, if you get me this contract or if you um, get me uh, to rent this, this piece of property, I'm going to sleep you 25000 cash. Okay, it's happening. I know it's happening. I'm going to sleep you this money cash. And, and that's why you can see people, and most of them don't even look like us. I'm sorry. It's the truth. And, and all of a sudden, they have a, a place that you might have been trying to rent forever and can't. But they get it because they slip it. My dad, tell the business, um, he's been at his, where he is down the street corner for years, 13 years. Still don't have a lease. And they told him, somebody told him, say, just give us, you know, give them $5,000, $10,000. It'll be done. He says, if I give it, I'm going to have to keep giving it. Somebody has to stand up and be honest. And it's going to take the church of the living God to say no. And to begin to pray against political corruption in our land. Because whether you think it does or not, it affects you. We have to come against that Canaanite. And bind it. And says that our senators and our governor will be people that know their God. The Bible says when the city, let me get it right. When there's righteousness in the land, the city rejoices. And so we have to begin to pray for righteous leaders because righteousness exalts a nation. Hallelujah. So we come against political corruption in our land. Then we have violence in our territory. I was looking up on the internet the level of violence that we have, and I found in my research that the U.S. Virgin Islands, um, if it were an independent nation, it would, have, it would have one of the biggest murder rates in the world. In the world, these three little islands, they're so small. They're, 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 they're 32 square miles is 84 square miles, St. Croix. They're so small. And yet, if this was an independent nation, an independent of America, we would have the large, per capita, we would have the largest rate of murders in the world. That's serious. That's serious. We have to pray. We have to drive out that parasite. In the name of Jesus. Then, this is, the, this is the worst one to me. We have the mission division among our spiritual leaders. We have division among our spiritual ranks. But tonight we cancel and we annihilate that Hittite tonight. And we say there will be unity in the body of Christ. Because we're going to the same heaven. We're going to the same heaven where there's going to be peace and love and dancing and singing. Why can't we get along here? Why can't we support each other here? My God, my God. Then, I talked about, oh, here's a good one, spirit of pride. Spirit of pride. Do you know the biggest churches in the islands are the ones that have the high ceilings? And the piped organs, they're large. But they're, some of them are some, because some of them are moving forward. They're dead like sepulchers. I mean, there's just no life, no, 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 no freshness. But people will stay there because their grandmother went there, their mother went there, and bless God, they're going to die there. Because it's a big church. And they go in for one hour and they leave in one hour. But if they were to go to a party, they would say, no, no, we ain't going home. That was my theme song. I don't know about you. That was my theme song. Okay. you know, Because none of y'all ever been to a club. Not a one of y'all. Anyway, 
So we have to pray for the spirit of pride to be broken in the islands. One of the reasons slavery did not work here and it ended quicker here than it did in America or the mainland is because our people refused to be slaves. But it left a strong spirit of pride. It was a good thing that they refused to be slaves. They would kill themselves before they were slaves. But it left a spirit of pride. Strong pride. And so tonight we have to come against pride. People will be in a service. And they need a healing. Or they need money. The person come up and say, if you need money, come. And they would not come. Giving our money. It's okay, we just took up an offering. And if you need money, come and get it. I'm not, not talking about any one particular thing. So if y'all think I'm talking about anybody, okay. But if you need money, come and get it. People will sit in their seat. The spirit of pride is strong. I called one time for a certain thing, and when the service was finished, a woman come to me. She says, that was me you were talking about. Will you pray for me now? I said, no. I said, I called for it in the service. When the anointing was flowing, you didn't come. And I don't want anybody to know my business. We are one another's keepers. And you know what another spirit here is? Gossip. Gossip. And that wasn't even on my paper. <laughs> we will talk about you. You saw what she had on? Shoes didn't match her hat. And, and you saw that wasn't even iron. Well, listen, iron, I don't care. Just, just talk about people for no reason. And then we say we're brothers and sisters. We have to come against these spirits. We say we want to be unified. We come to pray. There's no other thing you could do more unified than pray. But we have to get rid of these little foxes because they destroy the vine. And they hinder you. Because hey, you are ratata. And you think, oh, I just, I just lied on my sister. I just talked about my sister, my brother. God says, get it right first. And then come back to me. Because he's a holy God. And he means business. And he wants to use pure vessels. So that when you come before me, the devil can say, I found nothing in you. But if he finds something in you, he will accuse you. Then he will abuse you. He will misuse you. Because you're on the same team. You're fighting with him. It's time to get on the Lord's side. Amen. Amen. I found out today as well. That um, a soldier enlists, okay, I'm going to say it this way. There's a difference between a soldier and a warrior. A soldier enlists in the army, and that soldier follows directions from their commander. Their commander say, go this way, they're supposed to go this way. And they get training in boot camp to listen to instructions. They put them through vigorous training where they think they're going to die. But it's only to brainwash them to listen to the leader. So you have a soldier who voluntarily enlists. Or if there's a draft, he has to enlist. But a warrior, and our God is a warrior, a warrior is looking for a battle. Amen. Why do you think you call them prayer warriors? Prayer warriors look for battles. If I could kill a devil, I would. I ain't lying. Look for battles. And you don't get hit when you look for battles. But when you get hit, hit him 